in today's video we are doing a creative portrait photo shoot on location and I have the new Tamron lens which is an FE mount for Sony bodies and it is the Tamron 28 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 to 5.6 which we will be using today. Oh my gosh, so pretty. All right, I'm gonna start with some mid-length shots and yeah, for this one you can go, oh, the spider web. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, so this one you can go crazy with like the movement and stuff again. Sweet. It's like more of a creative. Yeah, like out, out around. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing I was surprised about is how tiny this lens is considering the range of focal lengths you can get. When I first got my hands on it, I was actually taken aback with how little it was. I was expecting something a lot bigger and heavier and had to do a double take at what lens it was. But this 28 to 200 only weighs 576 grams, making it a super easy all-in-one lens to take with you while traveling, to events or outings, and having a lot of range without it being too cumbersome to carry around. Oh, I like that little spin. <laughs> Like the little hop that you did kind of towards yeah, me. Kind of yeah. I guess the drawback of this focal range in a small lens would come down to the fact that the 28 to 200 has a variable aperture of 2.8 to 5.6. On the widest end of 28 millimeters, you'll have 2.8. And as you start to zoom at 50 millimeters, you'll be on 3.5. Around 70 millimeters, you'll have F4, all the way to being on F5.6 at 200 millimeters. Because of this variable aperture, I would say this lens is definitely better suited for photography outdoors in quite bright sunlight, especially if you're thinking of shooting more so on the telephoto end of the lens. Can you do one full on like spin on the spot? Yeah, of course. Yeah, get a, <laughs> a nice little spot so you don't trip. <laughs> ah, that's perfect. As you can probably see from the photos and camera settings I was using for this shoe so far, even though it was a very bright day with not a cloud in the sky, at 50 millimeters and f3.5, I already had my ISO at 200 and the shutter speed at one over 320. I decided not to go too much lower than that on my shutter speed as Charlotte was moving around quite fast and I wanted to be able to capture sharp photos of her movement. Throughout this entire photo shoot, I had my a7 III set to continuous autofocus. I also had IAF turned on the entire time and had a small flexible focus point that I kept on Charlotte's eye the majority of the time for when she spun around or had her face obscured by her hands or hair. Something that I found really interesting was that IAF was working mostly okay throughout the day, but sometimes I had a clear shot set up of her face and for some reason it just wasn't tracking her eyes that well and the IAF would kind of appear and disappear. I think I saved myself by having the small flexible focus point set up as when I got home to my computer to cull and edit these photos, I was genuinely surprised by the focus accuracy of the shots I took. I really thought I would have more out of focus shots but the majority of them were in. And when they are in, as you can see from the unedited 100% crops, they are tack sharp with lots of detail, which is what we like around here. There's plenty of skin texture and details in the eyes and eyelashes. Unlike the Tamron 70 to 180mm 2.8 lens I reviewed a couple of weeks back, which I'll leave linked down below in case you guys want to watch that video, I would personally love to use that lens more often for my portrait photo shoots as it has speed and quality just out of this world. This lens, on the other hand, I can see being used more so by beginner or enthusiast photographers who are after a starter, all-in-one lens that you could use for several different occasions. The focus speed and accuracy is good, but not as great as some higher-end lenses that I would personally need for my client work, for example. 
Okay. And then if you kind of sit on your like legs like this, love that. When it comes to portrait photography, I do really like how you can achieve a cool high fashion look to your photos on the wider end and then the more classic close-ups on the 100mm and over range of this lens, which is a pretty crazy variety to have in a single budget-friendly lens. I realized afterwards while editing my photos that I found a few sweet spots on this lens that I was naturally leaning towards while we were out on the shoot. I noticed I shot a lot of my favorite photos at 38 and 50 millimeters. These are the more environmental style portraits where you can see a lot of the location that we're shooting in and it adds a little bit of like an edgy look to the photo with the wide angle distortion. And then in terms of close-ups, I took a lot of shots I liked at 100, 135, and 200 millimeters as well. And I'll get a couple in landscape too. Perfect. And then I wanted to head down to that tree that's... Yeah. Um, so I've got like a branch here for a little bit of foreground blur. Ooh, that's so pretty. Um, can you take one little step that way? I would love to know if this is a lens you would add to your kit. It would be great to hear what you guys like about it or what you would have liked to see added into this lens. My personal opinion is that it is a great lens. It's not the fastest at focusing, but the images come out sharp with great color. And if you're in the right kind of location with a lot of trees or nature or greenery, the bucket is wonderful as well. I personally need faster apertures when it comes to my photography as I do a lot of shoots in different lighting situations. I do think this Tamron 28-200 would be a great option if you're looking at an all-in-one lens, maybe for photographing sports, kids or travels. And as I mentioned, for the range and quality you get, it's going to be very hard to beat the price point of this lens. Yeah, with your arms up is really nice here. In terms of bokeh, I wasn't expecting to see anything crazy since this lens has higher apertures compared to my prime lenses that I normally shoot at. But I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. On the widest end of the lens at 28mm and 2.8, we had some gorgeous, perfectly circle and bright bokeh in the background from the long grass and the trees in the far back of our location. There's not a heap of foreground to background separation in these shots, but I generally like that for some more environmental portraits anyway. At 50 millimeters, again, you can see some great bokeh, even at f3.5, and you can start to see the separation happening, which is a really nice look for portraits. Where you could really see that separation start happening is from the 70 millimeter and over portraits. And stay tuned because we are also going to be doing a bokeh comparison at all the focal lengths in just a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> so now we've come to the part of the video where we are going to be comparing um, a few different things. The first thing that I wanna do is take a photo at each of the main focal lengths of this zoom lens with both Charlotte and I standing in one spot so you guys can see like literally the massive range that this lens has side by side. So I'm gonna start on the 28 millimeter end and just take a couple of shots. And then I'm gonna zoom into 35. And the next focal length we have is 50 millimeters. And then we have 70 millimeters. Uh, the next one we have is 100 millimeters. And since this is a variable aperture lens, I do have to change my shutter speed and my ISO while I do this as well, just to keep the correct exposure. And then the next one we have is 135. And finally, we have 200 millimeters. Oh, wow. 
which is pretty much like a close-up portrait of Charlotte. <laughs> the dog is distracting me. <laughs> All right. The next comparison that we're going to be doing is a bucket test. So we've got this beautiful tree here that I think will provide some nice bucket so we can see them all side by side. And this time I'm gonna be using all the focal lengths, but I'm going to be moving around to fill the frame with like a mid-length portrait. So again, we'll start on the wider side on the 28 millimeter end. And then we'll go to 35 millimeters. And now we'll do 50. Then we'll go to 70 millimeters. I'm gonna take little steps back with every change that I do. Cool, and then we have 100 millimeters. So I gotta bump up my ISO for 100. Then we have 135. And finally, we have 200 millimeters. So that is all I have for today's photo shoot behind the scenes video and my thoughts and review on the Tamron 28 to 200. 2.8 to 5.6 lens. I would love to know also which ones were your favorite photos down in the comments below. I had so much fun capturing Charlotte's movement for today's photo shoot. It was, yeah, just heaps of fun. But thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.